ILL PowerPoint presentation for the year 2021, subject DES PHE 31. Presenter, Mrs. A.C. Stein, 081-277-5321. Good morning, I'm Mrs. Ansi Stein, your tutor for PHE 31 for this year. Welcome to the presentation for this subject. I hope you enjoy your studies and that you will be successful this year. Success comes with dedicated, consistent work. My contact details are 81 5321 that's my cell phone number, and ansistain at hotmail.com, that's my email address. You're welcome to contact me from Mondays till Saturdays from 8am to uh, till 8pm. You can either phone me or SMS or email me. In the latter case, I can send you a detailed answer. Please feel free to ask if anything is unclear or if you have problems regarding your subject. I'm willing to assist as far as I can. I'm going to discuss the most important facts of each unit separately. You will then be able to follow the content discussed if you page through your study guide while I'm discussing the content. Please note that this presentation is not a discussion of any exam paper, but of the most important content for the whole year. As an introduction to the study guide, I'm shortly going to explain some information regarding the guide itself. When you turn to the front of the study guide, you will find a detailed table of contents. Here you will find the headings of the complete content and you will be able to have a clear overview of your subject for the year. Take time to read through it to familiarize yourself with the content you're going to study. On page 1, you will find very important information regarding the time you require to spend with the subject in order to be a successful student. Because this is distant teaching, it's very important that you spend adequate time right throughout the year with your study material. To just start studying before the exams will not be wise and it will be hard to write the exams successfully. I recommend that you spend time every day with your studies, even half an hour every day will be worthwhile. Consistency is the key to being a successful student. When you turn the page, you will find verbs thinking processes. These words form the key of the assignment and also the exam paper. For example, when you are requested to analyze facts, you will have to present facts in detail. And when you have to outline, you have to only give an overview and present the main features. Make sure to know what is expected from you. But also read through 9 and 10. When you turn to Unit 1, you firstly find the table of content of this unit and then the learning outcomes. Learning outcomes are an indication of what content you will find in this specific unit, while learning activities, that's LA in short, follow the learning outcomes. It will be wise to firstly try to answer questions of the LAs on your own and therefore look at the answers which are at the end of each unit. Do not forget to also study your assignment you completed because some of these questions will be asked in the exams. So let us start with each unit separately now. Follow in your guide as I discuss the content. Unit 1. First of all, you need to understand what physiology is. It's a division of biology, and to be more specific, it's the science of how living organisms function. Whereas anatomy is about the structure of the body, what the parts of the body look like, their shape and where the parts of the body and organs are located. This is set out in detail in 1.1. In 1.2.2, the body systems are discussed. Concentrate on the lymphatic, respiratory, endocrine, digestive, skeletal, and nervous systems. Know their functions. Certain fitness terminology are discussed in 1.4. Give attention to the following ones in order to be able to explain them. 
aerobic exercises, flexibility, body mass index, BMI, blood pressure and low impact. Why is physical education important and to the benefit of secondary school learners? Teenagers are in such a vulnerable phase of life during their secondary years. Their bodies are changing physical, physically and their hormones are running wild. Physical education can have a positive impact on both these areas in many ways. It can also help in managing obesity, improving self-esteem and confidence. These are but a few reasons study to know them all in 1.5.1. Currently, some secondary learners experience certain health problems which occurs internationally. For example, HIV, mental health like depression, which is a health problem of the mind, early pregnancy, alcohol and drug abuse, and also malnutrition. There are quite a few more, so study 1.6 in this regard. Know the problems but also what each problem is about. In 1.10, the very important topic, namely how a coach can develop teamwork amongst members of a sports team is discussed. It is important that coach knows the players, in other words, know their strengths and also their weaknesses. He or she should also know how to communicate effectively to get the most out of the players. They should feel valued and listened to, and problems should be addressed as soon as possible and effectively. There are more to this topic. Study to know them. Walking and jog jogging are very important exercises, but they are different from example exercises in a gym. They are free of charge and can be done any time of the day. They do, however, like other exercises, strengthen the heart and build muscles. There are other benefits too. Study 1.11 regarding these facts. We're going to concentrate on Unit 2 now, where phases of motor development are discussed. In 2.3, the four important phases are discussed in detail. The reflexive movement phase is the first one, starting at birth up to one year, where infants engage in reflexive and involuntary uh, movements, meaning that uh, they are not learnt but come naturally, like sucking, which is a survival mechanism for newborn babies. The rudimentary f movement phase includes actions like reaching for objects and sitting, standing and walking. These skills are developed from zero to two years of age. The fundamental phase occurs, to, occurs from two to about seven years of age. Children gain increased skills during this phase by refining skills like running and throwing. The last phase is the specialised movement phase, which begins at about seven years of age up to adulthood. The skills are no more accurate and focused. You should be able to know the phases' names, the ages related to them, and also an example of the behaviour of each phase. Study these in detail as found in 2.3. We are aware that athletes and players should warm up before an activity, but do you know why it is essential? Study 2.4 in order to be able to discuss this topic. In 2.5.1, the cardiorespiratory endurance activity, FATIC, is discussed in full. Study these facts to be able to describe them clearly and well, but you should also be able to analyse these facts. Do you know what uh, that rope skipping has the same benefits as two sets of single tennis games? 2.5.5 sets out all the benefits of rope skipping and study them all. In 2.6, muscular strength activities and exercises are discussed. First of all, 
You should know what these exercises entail and you should also be able to give examples like yoga, hill walking, cycling and dance. A very important strength exercise is plank, which strengthens the core of the body. Study how to do it correctly as described in 2.6.1. The best way will be able to do the exercise yourself in order to be able to describe it 100% correctly. In 2.7, flexibility exercises are discussed in detail. It is important to know that you as a uh, PE teacher can teach learners these exercises. Important to know is that stretching, yoga, tai chi, and Pilates are exercises which improve the flexibility of the learners. Know the names of these examples as set out in 2.7. 2.13.1 concentrates on coaching styles. There are three main styles, namely autocratic, where the coach makes all the decisions and is bossy, the democratic style, where shared decision-making takes place, and the laissez-faire style, where the coach makes a few decisions and the learners take ownership and make decisions. Decide for yourself in which kind of coaching style you would want to get involved and which one is the best. Study to know them in detail. We're going to a page to Unit 3 now, where specific gymnastic exercises are described. One technique a PE teacher should be able to teach learners 100% correctly is cartwheels, and especially bench cartwheels. This technique should be taught completely correct from the start up to the end, otherwise the gymnast will be uh, an injured. Number the steps as found in 3.3 and study this extensively. In 3.6, different types of gymnastic balancing activities are named. You only need to know the names. 3.7 describes how rope cl climbing should be executed correctly. Study these facts in order to write down all the steps, but give special attention to the gym class lock. And very important, you should be able to analyze these facts, meaning why are the steps so important and why should certain actions be done with accuracy. In 3.8, rhythmic floor routines are discussed. This entails that exercises are done by gymnasts on the floor with or without music using rhythm to express themselves. To help with these exercises and to contribute to their aesthetic nature, certain apparatus are used like ropes, hoops, balls, clubs and ribbons. Acquaint yourself with this content. You must also be able to discuss what these rhythmic floor routines entail. And this content can be found in the first paragraph of 3.8. Study this extensively. Gymnasts can be done, uh, gymnastics can be done with uh, professional equipment, but also without professional equipment. Sometimes schools do not have these equipment and a PE teacher should then improvise to let learners do gymnastics without them. In 3.9, some ideas are set out in detail on how to still be able to practice gymnastics without any professional uh, equipment, like to make use of the floor space to invest in a few key pieces like benches and wedges, which are not that expensive. Even the wall can be used to practice handstands and some strengthening exercises. 
study therefore 3.9 extensively in this regard. Let's page to unit 4. Unit 4 is about training issues and the management of events. Sport builds character. In other words, people who participate in sport are also trained in certain characteristics which make them better persons like honesty, fairness, setting goal, endurance, etc. Are you able to explain how sport builds character? Character is defined as the way we think, feel and behave. Sport contributes to the character of the learners by improving their physical endurance, their moral habits, that's for example not taking bribes, goal setting, planning of time, concentration and confidence. These are the characteristics of a sport person uh, which needs to be developed. Make sure to study 4.1 in detail to be able to discuss and analyze this topic. The body should be stretched and warmed up before an exercise. In 4.2, common and simple stretches are mentioned, namely of the hamstrings, of the triceps, the shoulders, standing groin stretch and hip flex and also quad stretch. You only need to study these names for now. 4.4 has a list of stationary, standing on one place exercises for a short distance running. Study this to be able to know these names. During a relay race, it is crucial that the baton should be handed to the next athlete smoothly. There are three common exchanges of the baton, but you only need to study the push pass. The best way to be able to describe it 100% correctly would be to do the hand over yourself while describing it. Know the complete action as described in 4.8. Butt kicks is one of the exercises for a hurdle running runner. Study only this paragraph about butt kicks in 4.9. You should be able to identify which kind of actions speak of good and which of bad sportsmanship as found in 4.20. What would you say? If a player questions the decision of a referee during a soccer game, would that be a good or bad sportsmanship? It would be bad sportsmanship because it can lead to chaos if each player questions the decisions made during a game. Can you think of an example of good sportsmanship then? By congratulating the opponents after they won would be a good action. You should be able to name but also identify good and bad sportsmanship. Bad sportsmanship will be exactly the opposite. For example, when not congratulating the opponent, etc. As a PE teacher, it can be expected from you to organize a school athletics or sports event. It is crucial to know what to organize and take care of before such an event in order to make it successful. There are quite a few things to take care of. For example, who is the event when? Who is the event for? When is it going to be held? Where is it going to be held? Who will participate? Who will help with the event? The finances, etc. So study 4.22 in detail to know how to organize and execute a successful sport event. A coach teaches a certain sport code to the players. A good coach needs to have certain qualities in order to excel above a mediocre coach. Can you think of a few qualities? A coach should be able to communicate effectively, to have technical knowledge of the sport code, to cater for all the individuals he or she coaches, 
There are, these are but a few. You will find a detailed description in 4.21, which you should be able to know and discuss. The important content of Unit 5 can be found in 5.2, which describes the technique on how to execute the high catch of a cricket ball. You must be able to describe this in detail and correctly. Again, the best way to study it is to do the actions yourself. You should know at least 10 rules of uh, the game of cricket as described in 5.3. The game of soccer is played according to rules also. What would you say? How long does a soccer game last? How many players in a team? When is a player offside? Study 5.6 to know the rules of soccer. In 5.7, the procedure on how to execute a basic pass of a rugby ball during a rugby game is discussed. Run straight. Hold the ball with both hands. Look at the receiver of the ball. Pass at chest height in front of the receiver. Be sure the pass is made laterally, that sideways or backwards. Complete the pass and follow through by pointing hands at the receiver. These, there are steps two and three also, and you should study them too, as well as the above mentioned. Study tip. An easy way to study techniques, I think, is to actually do the action yourself while you talk it through. In that way, you know how it actually should be done and you have done it yourself, which make it more, makes it more familiar. This implies all the sport actions and even the different sport rules. To watch the sport games on television can also help to know and understand the rules for the different sport codes. As a coach, you should know the rules of a game by heart. Study the rules of rugby to be able to describe at least eight of them as set out in 5.7.1. Again here, it will help to watch a rugby game on television in order to understand the rules better. You only need to know the playing positions of a netball team and shortly what each of these positions job in the team is, as set out in 5.8.1. For example, GS stands for goal shooter and the job is to score goals. So study the names, but also the abbreviations and the job. 5.11 is also of importance because safety is of great importance when a physical ed education lesson is presented. Certain safety measures should be in place. For example, the teacher should know any physical disability of each learner. The space should be ample for the activity presented. Clothing and footwear should be appropriate, etc. Make sure also to be able to set up rules for your learners to let them play safely. For example, do not play with glass bottles. Do not run with sharp objects in your hands, etc. Study therefore this topic well. In 5.12, first aid procedures are discussed. When treating an injury, it is essential to follow the RICER method. The R of RICER stands for rest, the I for ice, the C for compression, the E of RICER stands for uh, elevate, and the R for referral. These are the key words for what each letter means, but you should know what each keyword implies. In short, the R of rest implies that the injured person should be kept still to avoid further injury. The I of ice 
stands for applying a cold pack to the injury for 20 minutes every two hours. The C for, uh, for compression, apply a compression bandage covering not just the injured area, but the areas above and below too. The E for elevate, elevate, lift to a higher position, the injured area to stop bleeding and swelling. And the R for referral, refer the injured person to a professional like a doctor for a precise diagnosis. You should be able to know the name of the method, what each letter stands for, but also what each word entails. So make sure to study this in depth to know it by heart. Also important in 5.12 is how to do rescue breaths. Ensure the casualties airways open. Pinch their nose firmly closed. Take a deep breath and seal your ribs around their mouth. Blow into the mouth until the chest rises and remove your mouth and allow the chest to fall. Repeat once more. Again, a study tip will be to practice this on your own so that you actually experience the complete procedure. Also very important discussed in 5.12 is what a PE teacher will have to do when a child gets injured. Study the first two paragraphs of 5.12 in order to know the procedure. That's the first two paragraphs. One point would be that the teacher should know the procedures of the specific school. Make sure to let the parent or guardian know about it and record the incident. There are more. Study these two paragraphs. Do you think that it's important that players stick to rules when playing a game? 5.13 sets out the reasons, so study them. Can you also critically discuss them, in other words, why these facts are important or not, if you are sure they are not? Unit 6 is about games to develop fitness and skill. For example, if I mention soccer, you should know that this is a game for large groups. Tennis, for example, is a game for pairs. And the game end ball is a game played by small groups of people. So study are all the names of all the games mentioned in 6.1, 6.2, 6.3 and 6.4. 6.5 describes how team relays and races should be played. At this stage, however, you only need to know the six names of these relays and races. Traditional games can be played during a PE class so that learners get to know the different cultures of our country. The game you should study is Kululu, as found in 6.6. .6. Know the game by heart to be able to describe it up to the end correctly. Remember, an effective way again to study it would be to play the game yourself and then describe it. A PE class should be enjoyable for learners and also less formal than, for instance, a maths class. But such a kind of class can easily end in chaos if not managed well by the teacher. So study 6.9 to find tips on how to do this. When we turn to Unit 7, 7.3, 7 7.2, 7.5 and 7.6 are important. Not all people can move to rhythm naturally. So you as PE teacher can use ways to practice learners to keep to rhythm. In 7.2, it is stated that not only is stomp a successful show, but a fun way to introduce learners to dance. The simple instructions to help you with that can be set out using this key which you have to know by heart. C meaning clap, S meaning stomp, 
a tune or song with a fast tempo and a heavy beat. SW stands for swish and that's brush your hands back and forth on the thighs and F for finger clicks. The last one is S for sidestep. So how will this key help you teach learners a rhythmic pattern? Practice the five key actions of the key above with them and then they can combine them and create their own routine. Know the key however by heart to help you with this as set out in 7.2. Again, do these actions yourself in order to understand to know them well. Very important, also study the paragraph below the explanation with, with the heading Basic Instructions. There are instructions on how to teach stomp is set out. Study this paragraph well. Not all people can move to rhythm easily, but it can be learned. What are these elements and how can they be taught? The first one is bop your head. You can use a drum with a steady beat to move the head according to rhythm, counting one, two, three and four in your head. Second one is shift your weight. Third one is move your feet. Read and understand what this move entails in your study guide. Fourth one is add some hip action and then get your arms moving. And the sixth one is style. I only mention the headings to follow to help you with learning rhythm. Study all the headings but also know what each one entails as found in 7.3. To dance with style has many benefits. In fact, the reasons of be uh, and benefits of dancing are set out in 7.5, like it keeps the body and brain active, it improves body posture, etc. Study all 10 of them, but you should also be able to shortly discuss each benefit and skill. Loud, loud noises, noises can have a negative impact on human beings. It is an impact on our health. It causes stress reactions. It has an impact on people's performance at home, at school or work. It can cause weight loss and mental and physical stress. It keeps us from having a deep sleep at night so the body, body cannot relax and repair itself. It even has an impact on our immune systems. Study all these negative influences of loud noise uh, sounds too as set out in 7.6. The last unit, Unit 8, also has quite important in, no, content. We all have to take responsibility for our own health. How? By making sure we get vaccination shots by shunning tobacco products and other substances of abuse, by getting enough physical exercises and eating nutritious food in proper amounts, etc. Study these information in 8.3. To be healthy and fit has definite advantages. The opposite will be to be unhealthy and unfit. Can you name the consequences when being not healthy and not fit? Study 8.4 in this regard. It is part of a PE teacher's job to teach children the importance of personal hygiene. Personal hygiene involves the hygiene of the whole body, the hair, the hands, to wash every day, to brush teeth twice a day, to wash the feet very well, etc. Have you ever thought why and how you will teach your learners the importance of personal hygiene and what the social reasons are that people are so aware of personal hygiene? Let your thoughts go on this sub, uh, topic because it is such an important part of life and should be taught to learners and 8.5 will help you with this. It is a common fact that too much exposure to the sun can cause skin cancer. 
especially in Namibia, we have to be careful of too much exposure. In 8.6.4, a table appears with a UV index and strength. For example, a UV index of 1 and 2 indicates a low UV strength, whereas a UV of 11 is extreme. Study that table well to be able to know what UV indexes indicate what UV strengths. Also in 8.6.4, the ways on how to protect oneself from the sun are discussed. Study these ways well. Also of importance in 8.6 are the facts regarding skin diseases. Make sure to know these facts regarding acne, psoriasis and eczema, meaning how they appear on the skin, the causes and how it can be prevented from each one of them. It is very important to eat a well-balanced diet. What does this entail? To cut down on sugar and saturated fats, to drink plenty of water, to at least eat two portions of fish per week, etc. Study 8.8.1 to know all the detail in this regard. The last paragraph of interest is very important subject of nicotine smoking and the harmful effects it has on units, uh, humans. These effects are discussed in 8.9.3 and make sure to know these effects by heart so that you will be able to discuss them. This concludes my discussion regarding the most important facts in your study guide. As mentioned previously, make it your priority to study right throughout the year, consistently, but every day. And remember that when answering a question, facts from different parts of the study guide can be applicable. It's not necessarily limited to one part of the guide, but you as teacher should know certain facts about the subject PHE as well as the correct procedures regarding the presentation of PHE. I stress this because some students think that are of the opinion that this subject does not need to be studied for and they do not need to know facts and then they do poorly in the exams. Take time to know your study guide which in, uh, has enough um, facts and also your assignment. And lastly, please note that short answer questions will be asked and the following kinds of questions can be asked. To fill in a word left out, for example, uh, what is used during relay laces, races? And the correct answer will then be baton. Possible answers can also be given and then you have to choose the correct answer and fill it in the space provided. The third one is definitions of certain terminology. For example, strength is the ability of the body to exert a maximum force against a force external to the body. Another type of short question is where two columns are given to you, a column A and a column B. In the first column, certain facts are given or concepts like exercise beneficial for a shot put athlete, speed, and the third one, chocolates and sweets. And then in column B, there are facts like it's not a healthy option to eat, lunges, and the ability to move from one place to another in just the shortest time possible. Now you have to combine the one f uh, concept in column A with a fact in column B. In this case, the answers were, will be 1B, 2C and 3A. Let's just look at 1B. 1 is the exercise beneficial for a shot put athlete and the correct answer will be then B, which is lunges. You only fill in the correct letters. Do not write out the words. 
please feel free to contact me regarding any uncertainties and questions you have about your subject. Good luck with the exams and you will be rewarded for hard work and dedication.